Hello, I'm Emma Woolerton and I'm one of the tutors on the Jack Greek Summer School. In this video, we're going to be looking at a particular type of adjective, as you can see on the screen, a third declension type adjective, or to give it a bit more grammatical terminology, a dual termination third declension adjective in on, on. We'll talk a little bit about the forms of the adjective and then there'll be some practice sentences to practice using those forms and get you used to the endings. Now we have a lot of grammatical terminology on the screen and it's always good when we have some grammatical terminology just to remind ourselves of what it all means. So the part of speech we're looking at is an adjective. As we know, adjectives tell us more about nouns. So we can, for example, use them in a sentence with the verb to be to describe a characteristic or a state that a noun is in. The horse is happy, for example. Or we can just bundle that adjective up with the noun as an attribute of the noun and then use it in the sentence however we want to after that. So I see the happy horse. In English, we make clear which noun an adjective is describing by word order. But as Greek is an inflected language, a language that changes the shapes of its words to reveal the words, that, the role that they're playing in the sentence, Greek does that, as you would expect, by changing the shape of the adjective. This is a process we call agreement. Now, nouns and adjectives agree in three specific ways. First of all, they have to agree in gender. All Greek nouns have a gender, they're either masculine, feminine or neuter. And so to indicate that an adjective is agreeing with a noun, we need to put it in a form that has the same gender as the noun form has. So if we have a masculine noun, we need to have a masculine form for our adjective. Greek nouns are also singular or plural. Sometimes they're dual, but we won't be talking about that in this video. We'll just be thinking about singular and plural. So we need to make the number of the adjective the same as the number of the noun. If we have a masculine singular noun, we need a masculine singular adjective form. And finally, Greek nouns have a case that tells us the syntax role they're playing in the sentence. And they can be either nominative, vocative, accusative, genitive or dative. And so when we're agreeing our adjective with our noun, we need to make sure it has the same case bound up in its shape as the noun does. If we have a masculine singular dative noun, we need to put our adjective into a form that is masculine singular and dative. Nouns and adjectives change their shape in particular ways and particular patterns and those nouns and adjectives are grouped together into groups that we call declensions and Greek has three of them so that's the third declension part of our grammatical terminology. Third declension adjectives follow the same sort of pattern for their endings as they change their shapes as third declension nouns. So let's just have a look at the pattern of endings for third declension nouns. So here's a table up on the screen now of the basic forms of third declension endings. When you look in a grammar book, you might see one or two differences because of how those endings have combined with the stem that they're being added onto. But this is the basic range of endings for our third declension nouns and so for our third declension adjectives. And the nominative singular across all three genders, there are a range of possible options. The neuter, nominative and accusative are always the same. So just as you can see on the screen there, the nominative and the accusative neuter will be the same, but the masculine and feminine accusative always ends an, an alpha in the singular. The genitive and the dative are the same across all three genders os for the genitive and e for the dative. In the plural we have the neuter nominative and accusative having that same ending again, this time both in alpha. The masculine and feminine nominative plural ends in epsilon sigma, es. The masculine and feminine accusative plural ends in alpha sigma, us. And then the genitive plural is orn, as it always is in Greek. Lovely genitive plurals in orn. And the dative plural is si. So let's have a look now at how these endings apply when we're thinking about the type of adjective that we're looking at. So here is a paradigm form of a particular adjective, the adjective eupron, eupron which means well disposed, well minded, something along those lines. And as you can see at the top of the screen, I've stated its stem is eupron. That's the bit that we add the endings to, we add the endings of 
nouns and verbs and adjectives to a stem, and that's the stem for Eupron. And these adjectives all form their stem in exactly that way, which is to say it's basically the same as the neuter, nominative and accusative singular. It's just got the shortened form of the O, not an omega, but an omicron. So in our masculine and feminine, we have Eupron for the nominative, Eupron for the vocative, Euprona for the accusative, and then Eupronos and Euproni for the genitive and dative. The neuter is just Eupron through nominative, vocative and accusative. And then as we can see, we've got the same genitive and dative form. In the plural, we have Euprones for the masculine and feminine nominative. That will be the vocative form as well, because vocative plurals are always the same as the nominative plurals. And then we have Eupronas for our accusative plural. The Greek is the neuter the, is just Euprona for both the nominative and accusative. And then again, they have the same genitive and dative, Eupronon and Euprosi. So that's why we have this idea of them being dual termination, because if you think about it, you've only really got two sets of endings to learn, one set for the masculine and feminine, and one set for the neuter. A number of words that take this form, among the most common are, the one we've just been looking at, eupron, which means well disposed, good minded, eudaimon, which means happy, kakodaimon, which means unlucky, veltion, which means better, keron, which means worse, and kreton, which means stronger or greater. These are, there are more than just the six I put on the screen, but the, these are six of the most common. So if we go back to my two English sentences at the start of the video, the horse is happy in Greek would be hohippos estin eudaimon, and I see the happy horse in Greek would be horo ton eudaimon a hippon. In the next part of the video, I'm going to bring some practice sentences up on screen for you to practice using the forms of this type of adjective. There'll be four sentences and they're missing one word. I want you to fill that blank with one of these dual termination third declension adjectives. First of all, I'll just bring up the Greek. You can pause the video there and fill in the blank which, which, with whichever word you prefer at that point. After that, I'll bring them up with a suggested English translation. And again, you can pause the video there and work those ones out by yourself using my suggested translation, if you like. And then after that, I'll go through each sentence one by one, bringing up the relevant form of the table of this adjective to help us as we're looking at the sentences on the screen. So here, first of all, are our four sentences. Legi hoti hepolis estin blank. Hot an air. Horai to blank hippus, to to blank now to ployon estimega, and haigunaikes ac blank. And here they are now with my suggested English translation. So I think the first one should mean she says that the city is happy. The second man, second one should mean the man sees the unlucky horses. The third one should mean the well disposed sailor's ship is big, and the fourth one should mean the women are stronger. So now let's just go through these sentences one by one. Here's our first one. Legi hoti he polis estin blank. She says that the city is happy. The word for happy that we can use for this one is eudaimon, eudaimon. And that's got that stem, just an eudaimon. Now if we look through this, legi, lege, she says, hoti, that, he polis, the city, estin, is, Happy is our blank. We can see that happy is being used to describe the city. Um, city is singular, so we're going to need the singular forms of our adjectives. So I'll just bring those up on the screen now. I've got them on one half and the sentence on the other. Looking through the grammar of that, we've got two clauses, she says, and that the city is happy. And in our second clause, that the city is happy, the city is the subject of the verb. So we're going to need a nominative form for our adjective. I'm looking at our definite article, he, or if we just remember it as a fact about this noun, polis, we'll know that that's a feminine form. So we're going to need lege hoti he polis estin eudaimon. In our second sentence, ho ana horai tu splank hippus, the man sees the unlucky horses, we can use the word kakodaimon to mean unlucky. 
looking through it, we can see that the thing being described as unlucky is the horses. So we've got more than one horse, we're going to need our plural forms for our adjectives. Going through the grammar of that, Ho'ana, the man, Horai, sees, the unlucky horses. The horses aren't the subject of the verb, that's Ho'ana, the man. In fact, they're what's being seen, so they're the object of the verb. So they are going to be, and we can tell this as well from tous, our definite article, and hippus, second declension noun there, that they're going to be accusative, plural. And tous also lets us know that they're going to be masculine. So we need the masculine, accusative, plural form using kakodaimon. So we're going to end up with ana horai tus kakodaimonas hippus. Our third sentence, totu blank now to ploy an estimega, the well-disposed sailor ship is big. We'll be using the adjective that we've had as our practice form or paradigm form in that table all along, eupron, eupron, meaning well disposed. Looking through the person or thing being described as well disposed in the well disposed sailor ship is big is the sailor. So we're going to need the singular form in this case. So let's bring those up on the screen. Again, if we look through the grammar of this, we've got to straight away after to, we've got two. We have two definite articles, one after the other. And that's going to make it clear to us that we're going to have two nouns coming along at some point in what's often called a sandwich construction, where we put some information in between a definite article and the noun. That's exactly what we've got here. We've got to, and we've got to, and we've got now to, to and now to go together. And then we have ployon. So to and ployon go together. That's the ship. Estimega is big. The ship is the subject of the verb to be there. The ship belongs to the well-disposed sailor. The well-disposed sailor's ship is big, that's possessive there. So we're going to need a genitive form. We've got to and now to in the genitive singular. So we're going to need the masculine genitive singular form. We'll end up with to to eupronos, now to ployonestin esti mega. The well-disposed sailor's ship is big. And finally, Haigu Naikes AC blank. The women are stronger. Looking through that, Haigunaikes, the women, AC, are clearly we need our plural form here. So let's get those up on the table. And again, looking through Haigunaikes, they're both nominative forms. Gune Gunaikos is a third declension noun itself. So we're going to need a nominative form to fill in our blank. We're going to end up with Haigu Naikes, AC Cretones. And I'll just put all of the answers up on the screen now, just for a minute. So you can pause now if you want, just to note those down. We'll see how you got on. And that is the world of third declension adjectives in on and on. As I say, a number of common words take this form. So it's really useful to learn them, especially for those comparative forms like better or stronger. So really helpful set of forms to learn. And for more resources about ancient Greek, please go to our website, www.greeksummerschool.org.